Hey everybody, thanks for joining me. Today is June 28th, 2015. It's 8.03 p.m. We're running three minutes late, so we're going to get started and jump right in to the easy way to sell on eBay. My name is Dana Crawford. For those that don't know me, you can get more information about me at my website. I've been an eBay seller. Um, this is my 18th year of making a living full-time on eBay. And in 2008, I quit all three of my jobs. Excuse me, 1998. <laughs> I quit all three of my jobs, and I have been doing eBay full-time ever since. So you can get more information. Um, give me a shout out on my Facebook page. Just go to Dana Crawford number one and Twitter and Pinterest and all of the others, wherever you are, just give me a shout out. And then you can also um, give me um, and give me an email. I'm also um, a certified local expert with Constant Contact. And they are gracious enough to sh provide the webinar service for me. So big shout out to them, and I thank them very much. I, I love Constant Contact. I'm a huge supporter, and I also do workshops on email marketing. And I've got a lot of email marketing workshops coming up next month. So if you'd like to participate, um, Go ahead and get your free trial. Go to powersellingmom.constantcontact.com and get your tile set up and, and or your account set up with them. And then you can be in my Facebook group. And we've got webinars and tutorials and all kinds of things for everyone that's under my umbrella. Now, for the legal part, um, this isn't a live presentation, but please do not record the screen. And um, you can. I don't mind if you, um, you know, put a tweet out on Twitter and say that you're you're watching the webinar. Please just give me a, a tweet back, and it's at Dana Crawford is my Twitter handle, and then also on Facebook that you're at our presentation. So those of you that are with us, I know we have several that are brand new to eBay and have never done a thing on eBay. So thank you so much for taking that first step because you, we do not, first of all, I do not go step by step how to set up an eBay account or how to set up a PayPal account, but you are gonna need both. And it's seriously very simple. Just go to ebay.com, click on register, and follow the prompts. Same thing with PayPal. Go to paypal.com, follow the prompts, and you'll be a member before you know it. So nothing's in stone, so don't worry if you create an eBay ID and you think, oh, I don't like that ID. Just get your account created because you can go back later and uh, in 30 days and then actually change your ID. So today's agenda, this webinar, is about uh, research. We're going to talk about researching items on eBay. We're going to talk about different listing styles. We're going to talk about the fast track because that's why we're here today. We're here to learn about the fast and easy way to list on eBay. And then we're going to do some uh, talk about some shopping on eBay. And then I'm going to share some tips, and we will have a Q&A. Now, just to let you know, this we only have like 45 minutes, so I do not go into step-by-step -step how to do shipping. I have um, more presentations coming up on that, and I also on my YouTube channel have several about how to print a label and how to do shipping. So today's focus is getting started on eBay the easy way. So as I start all of my presentations, I tell everyone, if you don't learn anything at all from me today, the absolute most important part of being successful on eBay is the research. I have people come to me, I'm a business consultant, and people come to me and they'll say, oh, eBay sucks, I can't, I can't sell my stuff, nobody's buying my stuff. Well, the thing is, it could be that you're listing stuff that nobody wants. And that's why it's really important to do your research before you list. And I'm a firm believer in that. 
So people come to me and they'll say, oh, my items are worth millions. And this is the thing, too. When you start selling on eBay, your friends and family are going to come out of the woodwork and they're going to say, oh, can you sell this for me on eBay? And can you sell that for me on eBay? I read about this in a collector's book, this Elvis record in the collector LP book says that it's worth millions. But the truth is on eBay, it's not worth millions. They saw about it um, on a TV show, the road show, or someone projected it to be worth millions. It could have been an appraiser wrote an appraisal for your jewelry that says it's worth 35000 when in all reality, um, the appraisers for jewelry are setting those up for insurance reasons in case you get robbed, but it's not the actual resale value, so you cannot go buy an appraiser. And then also Google. People say, oh, I Googled it, and Google said that this is worth millions. So these are all the little things that, people get their hopes up about because they see it on all of these places when the fact is we need to take a step back and learn how to research on eBay. We're going to go by the current market value. Excuse me, just took a sip. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is you're going to go to the top of eBay.com and you're going to notice that there's a search bar there. This is where you can type in anything that you're probably ready to shop for. So you would just type in to take a look for current contents, current items. So you would type in a few words there when you're doing shopping on eBay. But when we're doing researching on eBay, we're going to go to the right of the toolbar and we're going to click on the word advanced. And when you click on advanced, it'll take you to the advanced page. And this is where you're going to type in a few keywords on what it is that you're looking for. And the important thing is to check box the box that says completed listings. And then you're going to simply search. Now, before I go on, I want to point out I um, work a lot with stay-at-home moms. And I created my website, PowerSellingMom.com, in 2007. And I created it with the meaning of reaching out to moms because I wanted to help moms learn how to stay at home so that they could make a living at home and look after their children because um, that's what I did. And I was ever so thankful I never missed anything in my kid's life. So it was important to me to do what I could to help moms. So I would tell them, first of all, to have three boxes and take that first box and go around the house and start putting stuff in it that you don't want. And then once the box is filled up, come and sit at the computer, pull out the first item, and go to advanced search and type in a few words of the item. So let's, let's for example, we're going to type in Starbucks coffee mug, those three words. This is your homework also. So when you get off of this presentation, you can do the same. Type in Starbucks coffee mug. And then... Again, you're going to click on completed listings and then check and then click search. And then what's going to happen is the eBay system is going to pull in all of the Starbucks coffee mugs that have ended in the last 10 to 30 days or so. And it just depends how far back it'll go is on per category. But on this particular one, it brought in 42,000. 684 listings with those three words Starbucks coffee mug and now that's a lot of listings so I'm not going to sit here for four days and and look through 42,000 listings so what we're going to do is we're going to go to the right of the page and we're going to adjust the sort you notice that I always have my sort on lowest price first. That's because I've been shopping, because when I shop on eBay, I always shop for the lowest price. But when I'm researching on eBay, I want to adjust it to the highest price first. So I'm going to re recategorize, reorganize all of these um, 42,684 listings and put the highest priced items at the top. 
So my motto is show me the money. Show me the money, honey. And it'll reorganize all of those listings. And what will happen is if it's in green, it means that it's sold. And if it's in red or black, it means it did not sell. So if you have a Starbucks mug from Portugal, I suggest you give me a call. I'll give you $10 for it. <laughs> but if you have um, a Starbucks mug, this is how you can start to learn or whatever, whatever you're searching. This is how you start to learn about what's worth the most money. What's the most valuable? What's worth your time? So we noticed the first mug sold for $611, and it had 32 bids. So that means that they had it listed as an auction. And then the second one listed or sold for $610, and it had 31 bids. So if I wanted to learn even more information, I could click on those that bid number. I could click on the word 32 bids, and it would actually show me what they started their auction at. So if they started their auction at a low price, I would be confident to start my auction at a low price. And the thing is, you want to follow success. You'll also see down at the bottom, it, there's the word sell one like this. But we're going to come back to that in a minute. The main thing is right now we're going to research and we're going to learn from our research. This is how you become educated. This is what I call developing an eye for what to buy and sell on eBay. That was an ebook I wrote many moons ago. But the thing is, you want to learn how to research. The more you research, the better you'll become at seeking out the goods. So you can see this top Cleveland mug sold for $299.95. And that was a buy it now. So they started it at that price. But I can't help to wonder if they did an auction, if it might have went for more. I don't know. But the bottom one, it says um, they were asking $290 as a buy it now, but it didn't work out for them. That was for 200 of those reusable Starbucks cups. They're quite common, I think. But that didn't work out for them got to give them credit. They took it out for a spin. They tried it, but it didn't work out. So as we're going through all of these listings, we want to pay attention to the successful ones and take a look at what kind of words did they use in their title. And also, did they have an auction or was it a buy it now? And did they have free shipping or not? Sometimes it works out to where if they offer free shipping, it makes it more desirable. I'm even guilty of that. If someone, if I have a choice between many different things, the one that has free shipping has a better price, I may go with that, that item. Again, it just depends. So these are the kinds of things you want to keep in mind. So to recap, number one, you're going to go to advanced search. Number two, you're going to type in a few keywords. You're going to pull items out of that box and, and look them up. Number three, you're going to check box completed listings. And then you're going to click on search. You're going to adjust the sort bar on the right to the highest price first. And then you're going to follow success because we want to be like them when we grow up. <laughs> we want to make as much money as they did on their products. So as I mentioned, you've got your three boxes, right? So that first box, we're pulling one item out at a time. We're going to um, advance search, type in a few keywords, check box completed listing, click on search. And then the items that are worth listing on eBay are going to go into a second box that we have marked called eBay. And then we have a third box marked either Goodwill or Garage Sale or 
hospice, whichever nonprofit or thrift that you want to give it to, or um, if you want to prepare it for a garage sale, this is another avenue. So as you're going through each listing or each item, you pull it out of your box, you look it up on eBay. If it's only going for $10 on eBay, I may put $5 on it and put it in my garage sale box. Do price tag it right then and there. And then when you have enough boxes that are ready for a garage sale, you pile them all up in the garage and now they're all priced. Everything's all priced. You're ready to rock and roll. Then all you have to do is have your garage sale or I'm old now. So I don't really like having garage sales. So what I do is I run an ad in our local, it's called OcalaForSale.com. And I'll run an ad in there. It's free. And I'll say, Items garage sale ready. Everything's garage sale ready. No time for a garage sale. Please make offer. And then I'll take a picture of all the pile of the boxes. And generally, someone will come by. They'll give me a couple hundred dollars. And I'm happy camper. And they're on their way. And I didn't have to stress out all weekend with <laughs> a garage sale. So anyhow. Now we're going to talk about listing an item on eBay. Okay. So there's three basic eBay listing styles. First, we have an auction. And you can start your bid as low as a penny in an auction. Or we have an auction with a buy it now. And buyers have the option to either bid it, bid on it, or to buy it now. Or the third type is called a fixed price. So seller sets the price and the buyer can either purchase the item or make an offer. So FYI, there's also what's called a reserve auction. And that's where the seller sets a price that's hidden from the public. So no sale if the reserve is not met. I don't generally recommend um, doing reserves. I don't even like reserves. I just decided to add it to my slide because it never fails. Someone asked me a question about them. So just putting it out there, um, a reserve means that you would set your price at, say the auction would start at 99 cents, but your reserve would be $400. And then people would come along and bid and bid and bid, and then it only goes up to $300, and somebody wins it for $300. But now you're not obligated to sell it because the reserve was not met. But in my opinion, you're better off just fix doing a fixed price, starting the bid or starting it at, say, $500 with make an offer, and it's cheaper. So bottom line, research will determine what kind of listing style. If you want an auction or a fixed price, that's what we're going to learn when we do our research. That There's no guessing because we want to follow success, and that's why research is important. And then should we start our price high or low? Again, by looking and doing our research, this is what's going to help us determine if we should start the bid high or we start the bid low or go with fixed price and have it high or low with make an offer. So here we are now on the fast track to eBay listings. So we're going to start first with what I pointed out to you on that other screen called Sell One Like This. And eBay has made it so darn easy for us now that when we have a listing, when we have something that we want to sell, for example, this Starbucks mug. And mind you, these Starbucks mugs are still out there at Starbucks. I picked one up at our local mall here in Ocala. I went into the mall to have a, a cup of coffee, a latte, and I went in and it was like um, staring at me on the shelf. So I went straight for it and grabbed it and I asked them if they had any more and they said no. So I sat down, and while I was having my latte, 
I listed it on eBay and I listed mine for $85 as a buy it now with make an offer and someone came along and bought it for $85. It took two days, but I did sell it for $85 and it was on sale for $5.99. So that was kind of fun. So you might want to watch for those mugs when you're going out and about to Starbucks. So anyhow, this person had theirs listed. They had two of them for $79.99. So they could have made more money if they would have done did their research. So all I had to do was click on sell one like this. Once I discover, hey, that's what I want to sell, click on sell one like this. And then what will happen is it will bring up the same category that those people use or that person, and it will automatically put my listing in that category and then it'll also pull up the the same title so I can go through and take a look at the title and I can adjust um, some things if I want to like me personally I like the word new at the front of my title I'm also um, I don't like a lot of caps, but I do like caps, but I like having about every third or fourth word, all caps, but that's just me. So everybody has their own thing, but it's not recommended by eBay to have all caps. Don't put all the words in caps. The other thing I want to tell you is your title on eBay is like bait on the hook. So consider it like bait on the hook, and I tell everybody this at all my events. So it's bait on the hook. It doesn't have to make sense. It's not a sentence. It's just loaded up with keywords that are about your item. Now, you can't write Louis Vuitton, obviously, in the title if you're not selling a Louis Vuitton. So it's that you'll get in trouble for keyword spamming. So it's important that you have important words, keywords. And then your next job is to click on is, the, is it new or is it used. Don't worry about anything else. So the second style of listing an item fast on eBay is to go to a current live listing. So if you're cruising around and you're doing some shopping and you discover something and you say, hey, I've got one of those, then all you have to do is while you're at the item is click on sell now. And when you click on sell now, again, it'll pull up the same category that that person used and it'll pull in the same title that that person used. This makes life so easy. I'm telling you, it's gotten so easy to list on eBay compared to how it was back in the day when, when several of us started. It's just gotten so much easier. I can list really fast. I can get more listings done now than I could before. So take advantage of this. Again, check the title. Make sure that it's got all the words used. eBay gives you 80 characters. Take advantage of all of them. And then is it new or is it used? Now the third way. Now these are all options. So now you know you've got three ways to list an item on eBay. The third way is to go right to your ebay.com page. And then at the top, uh, that search bar, above the search bar, you're going to see the word sell. And all you do is click on it. Click on sell. And when you click on that, now you're going to type in a few words. eBay is going to say, okay, what do you want to sell? Tell us what you're selling. So type in a few words of what you want to sell. So for this example, I typed in Starbucks Coffee Mug Florida or whatever it is, if it's a sleeping bag or whatever it is, and then eBay will say, okay, we suggest you put it in this category because now your next job is to choose a category, and they'll make suggestions for you. Now, no matter which way of the three that you list on eBay, they all have the same basic information. You're going to have a title. No matter which way you list, you've got a title. 80 characters, bait on the hook. You've got a category. You, no matter what kind of listing style you use, you've got a category. Then use it newer as it used. And then you're going to add photos. We're going to talk about that in a minute. 
but that's what the next process is. And then the next process is to describe the item, which I'm going to talk about more in a moment. And then the price. And then shipping. And a return policy. Everybody needs a return policy. This is it. This is the checklist for listing an item on eBay. Whoops, let me back up one more time so you can see, make sure you saw that. Oh, there we go. The title, the category, new or used photos, description, price, shipping, return policy. That's it. That is your magic checklist for listing an item on eBay. So those of you that have been wondering about all this, there it is right there. Easy, easy. So listing an item continued. So we have our category, our title, is it new or used? Then the next step is the photos. Now generally when I'm at a big event, I say how many people have a smartphone? And then most of the room, their hands go up. And then I'll say how many people have a dumb phone? And then a couple hands go up. <laughs> And then I'll say, oh, those of you that have the dumb phone must be calling my mom because my mom still flips her phone. And I tease her, but she loves her phone. She even upgraded to another flip phone. But that's all right. She doesn't have anything to do with the Internet. She wonders what the heck I do to make money online. But the thing is, no matter what kind of um, phone or camera that you're using, it's really easy to upload your photo. So if you're using your mobile device, then you'll simply um, upload them from that. Or if you're using a camera, you're going to plug your camera into your um, laptop, upload your photos to your laptop, and then click on Add Photo. And when you click on Add Photo, it's going to bring in all of your pictures. Well, you're going to have to find them in your computer and then pick and choose the ones that match the item that you're selling. Now, this is an example of a sleeping bag, and I took some pictures of it outside. And the first photo is going to be your best photo. So it's really important that you have the first photo, the best photo. And then don't worry about anything else on the page. eBay's going to try to upsell you for some extra stuff that costs you money. I never click on those unless they're free. And then um, you can also edit your photo. Now, those of you that are um, using the smartphone, you can crop your photos right directly from your phone and upload them. So now that we have our photos uploaded, our next job is to describe the item. Very easy. I tell people, stare at the item and type it out what you see, like you're explaining to someone what it looks like that can't see it. Because it's really important that you have an accurate description. And it's also, this is my personal theory, I like to keep them short and easy to read. Short, less is best. Because, well, of course, you have to describe it properly. But don't tell me about, oh, I have to ship on Tuesday because I watch my grandma on Wednesday. Or the grandkids come over on Thursday. And da, 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 da. I don't want to hear about your life. Just tell me, just describe the item. And don't say, oh, if you have a problem, don't leave me bad feedback. Make sure that you contact me because then it puts a bad taste in my mouth. It puts a bad vibe. And I'm probably going to leave the page. You should, um, if you're interested, I do a webinar on mobile. And it's really important because such a huge percentage of people are shopping on mobile devices. So this is why when I do my listings, I keep them all left margin, which means I type in about five or six words, and then I hit the Enter key. And then I type in five or six words, and I hit the Enter key. And then I use a number 18 font. So as I mentioned before, I'm old now. <laughs> and so... I have, my eyes have gotten bad, so it's really, really annoying for me when I'm shopping on my, on my iPhone and I cannot read someone's listing for the life of me. It drives me insane, and I just leave. I just leave their page and I go to the next one because to avoid that happening on my listings, I use number 18 font, 
And also, I use black text. No fancy schmancy um, slanted text or indent, I mean, no um, bright colors or no falling snow, no nonsense. Just simple black text with white background. No template needed. And then also include any flaws. If the item is has a dent, make sure that you talk about the dent. If the item has a rip, make sure that you describe the rip. Because if you don't be accurate in your description, you're going to get a return. The person's going to say, hey, you didn't tell me about this. And then always try to have a positive statement in your listing. Don't be negative. Negative energy draws negative people and so and can get you a negative. So I think it's really important to always have a good vibe on your page and and avoid negative statements. It's just like with raising children. If you say something negative to the child, you should follow it up with something positive. So if you say something negative, the the dress has a rip on it, but the belt but it's not noticeable under the belt or whatever whatever the case may be may be the the glass has a chip on it but the colors are brilliant in the sunlight just follow up with something positive you can also go to my eBay store and take a look at any of my listings and don't freak out when you go to my eBay store right now because I'm in liquidation mode. I hate, hate inventory. I'm not an inventory person. So I've started the penny auctions today. So if you want looking for bargains, head on over to mine because I wanted to clean out some shelves. And so I'm not, once I've had something for six months, it's out of here. And so I shoot everything out to penny auctions and then I up the shipping a little bit. and roll the dice and that's how I clean inventory I do not shop for more stuff I'm not a hoarder I do not shop for more stuff until I get rid of what I have and now I can't wait so at the end of July through July I'm gonna be liquidation mode auction or fixed price is the next step and now we're gonna take a look at eBay is going to make suggestions to you. You can take or leave what they suggest. So in this example, they're saying auction. And then they're also saying, you know, if you want to add a buy it now, as we mentioned earlier, you can add an, a buy it now to your auction. And then you can either have a one day auction, a three day, a five day or a seven day auction or a 10 day auction. Now the fees are a little bit different for each. Now a one day, three day or five day auction is going to cost you a dollar. A seven day auction will probably cost you zero. It just depends. It'll probably be free. It just depends what kind of offer eBay is offering you. And I don't know that until you log in because they offer everybody something different. A 10 day auction will cost you 40 cents. So it just depends. Now today I put out a couple diamond rings. I put them on one day auctions and it cost me a dollar fifteen. To list them so um, I like to sell jewelry uh, gold and diamonds on one day listings. so that's just me and that's what works best for my in my experience on those types of items eBay also will have a schedule your listing area and this is great it only costs 10 cents now I will do this if I'm going to on vacation my husband and I went to England and Ireland the last two years and what I did was I scheduled auctions to start the last week before I came home and then I had them end two days after I got home and then that way I called it my paid vacation and it worked out really well um, the the thing that's important if you do decide to give that a try, never, ever, ever, ever have your auctions end the day you come home <laughs> because you've got to have a day of rest. I did that only once in my life and oh my gosh, did I regret it because I was so exhausted and I had to do all this stuff to ship. Of course, I love the money, but the shipping wore me right out. So you want to kind of spread those out. <laughs> Next choice is how to ship. 
So eBay is going to have a few suggestions to you to make your life easier. They're going to say, we suggest you use priority mail, which generally anything over a pound is going to go priority mail. And then they suggest if you offer free shipping, you can take it or leave it, checkbox. I generally kind of spread it out. I have some free shipping, some not free shipping. I mix it up a bit. And then you're going to see a place for the global shipping program. So I'm not going to go into a lot of it. Those of you that are brand new, I'm just going to tell you say yes to the global shipping program and no to international outside of the global shipping program. For new people, I just feel that it's easier to get your feet wet. It's so awesome the way that the global shipping program is set up. You just say yes to the global shipping and then all you're going to do is ship it domestically just like you normally would to anybody in the U.S. You'll box it up, ship it to Kentucky, and then eBay will ship it for you from Kentucky to Australia or the U.K. or Canada. You have no stress and no worries, and they take care of everything. You can't get bad feedback, and you can't, and then they they stand behind if there is a problem or the item breaks or returns. They stand behind up. So say yes to the global shipping program. Now, those of you that say, well, I still want to offer international shipping outside of the global shipping. So what that means is uh, there are some countries that are not in the global shipping program. So, for example, if your country, somebody from the Russian Federation or Saudi Arabia, and they want your item because they're not in the global shipping program, if you say yes outside of the global shipping program, then you can choose what's called calculated shipping. And then you just put in the weight and the measurements of the item and what kind of shipping. And I highly recommend you go with express mail. Personal opinion, I think express mail is the safest. I've never had a package lost. People, Other people say, oh, it's too expensive. Oh, well, is my thing. It brings out the people with money that really want my product and will not consider to cause, you know, be fraudulent against me. So I have been safe with it, and that's what I recommend. Now, if you're going to be successful on eBay, you are going to need a shipping scale. That's the bottom line. The post office generally sells them in the lobby. They're a little pricey, but they are accurate. Also, I know a great place you can find some. Yes, eBay, it's true. So if you go to eBay, Go to lowest price first, type in 70 LB shipping scale, and, you know, may as well get one that, that will hold a lot in addition to um, a regular one. So my husband bought me a beautiful one for our wedding anniversary, and he bought it at his favorite toy store called Harbor Freight, and they also sell them. I've also seen them at um, Walmart. So... Price around, but bottom line, make sure you get yourself a good. When I first started, I had a one I got at Goodwill, and it was a baby scale, and I still have it. And it's <laughs> I don't use it anymore, but all right. And then next, you're going to need to put in the, the measurements of the item. So you're going to need a good measuring tape, a good reliable measurer, and also pay attention to where you get the measure because I made the mistake. I bought on eBay, China, and I bought all these measuring tapes that were red, blue, yellow, green, all eBay colors. And I was like, oh, this is going to be so cool. I'm going to pass these out to my students and give these away at my events. And so they came in the mail and I measured a coat. And uh, some lady contacted me on eBay and said, I don't know about your measurements. It seems like it should be longer than what you're saying. And part of me you would, was thinking, well, lady, I've already measured it. It is what it is. But then I thought, oh, wait a minute. I measured that with the China tape. <laughs> so I went and um, got my grandmother's seamstress tape and pulled it out and measured the coat. And sure enough, it was totally off. So all of the China measuring tapes went in the garbage, and I had to go pull listings that I knew that I measured with those tapes. So pay attention to where you buy your tape. And then 
I recommend just using package or thick envelope. That's it. So, of course, if you have a large box, adjust it to a large box. Or if you're going to ship a couch, adjust it to freight shipping. But normally, the average item is going to go with package or thick envelope. And then, just to save time, I recommend you use USPS standard post two to nine business days. Now, when it comes shipping time, you're going to probably use priority mail, and I'm going to show you more on, on when we talk about shipping. But for now, just to get your listing up and running, it doesn't have to be picture perfect. Just choose USPS, standard post, two to nine business days, and don't stress over that long list. Some people come in here and they're going, oh, my God, I don't know what to pick. It could be this. It could be that. Just get over that and just pick USPS, standard post, two to nine business days, and move on. Okay, you're also going to notice at the top, it says offer local pickup only. I never, ever, 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 ever recommend that. And the reason is because then it limits you in search. So if I have a couch, I don't mind um, Georgia. Georgia doesn't mind coming to Florida and picking up that couch or the next state or the next state. They don't mind driving over and picking it up. But if I have local pickup only, it's only going to be available in my community, in my, in my area or within the next hundred miles or 200. So don't cut yourself short. You will lose business if you choose local pickup only. If you are going to ship furniture, if I could start my eBay life over, I would sell furniture and car parts. And furniture because I, I think there's really good money in furniture, but my husband won't let me bring furniture home anymore. So I would be doing furniture because every piece of furniture I've had, I've sold really well. And some people are afraid to ship it. And there really is nothing to be afraid of. All you do is you choose freight shipping, and then in your description box at the bottom put, we'll ship anywhere in the world, buyer makes arrangement for shipping. And then you work things out with people. That's, I'll do another webinar on that someday. <laughs> okay, so now we're at the part where, we're, where we review. So we're almost done. So now we're going to put in our PayPal ID, which is your email. And there's mine if you want to PayPal me some money. It's Dana at Power Selling Mom. That's my PayPal ID. And then I put in the zip code of where the item is located and the handling time. One business day I feel is the best, the best one to use. And the reason is because myself, when I'm shopping, and if I see they're not going to ship that for four or five days and I'm not going to get it for 10 days, I probably am not going to buy it. But if I see that they have one business day, then chances are I'm going to shop. So one business day means that you're going to ship within 24 hours after they pay. And that's business hours. So if they pay at 3 o'clock on Friday, you technically don't have to ship it till before 3 o'clock on Monday. Although I ship on Saturdays, but it's up to you. You don't have to. And then also returns. If you do not accept returns, you're also losing money. Very, very, very rarely have I had a return. But I do offer them because if you don't, I'm the same way. If I'm shopping from someone and they don't accept returns, I think, huh, what's wrong with it? <laughs> Why aren't they accepting returns? What's wrong with those people? And so it kind of scares me off. So I will, I, it's just me. I won't shop with people that don't accept returns. And the other thing is you can put, what I do is I put buyer pays return shipping plus a 20% restocking fee. Now, I do not put that in my description box. I do put it in the return area on eBay. There's no need to put that information in your description box. Okay. So then your next step is either to preview it, save it for later, or list it. That's it. This is the basic set, the basic format that we just went through on how to list an item on eBay. Very easy. 
So now you can preview it. You can, and when you click on preview, it'll show you what you just did, how it'll look live. Or you can click on save for later. Or you can click on list it. Or you can just close the page and then forget about it and then try it again tomorrow. So the good news is, and there is good news for you. And the good news is it will not blow up. I promise. The main thing is that you sit down at your computer, you follow the process to list an item on eBay, you see how easy it is, and then you can save it for later, you can delete it, you can do it again tomorrow, you can um, call your sister, <laughs> call someone and ask them to take a look at it, before it goes live. So you do not have to um, be worried about it. It's not going to blow up. It's not going to bite you. You can do it again and again. Some people like to try it a few times before it goes live. But the main thing is to practice and to have fun with it. Now, I'm an experienced seller, but what I like would like to recommend is what I do to list items even faster is I set little goals for myself. So I'll say, okay, I'm going to list five items before lunch. And then I will go to my laptop and I'll go to research it first and then I'll sell one like this. I'll go through all of the information, the title, the description. I'll do everything except the photos and then I click on save for later and then I'll do the next one the title the description um, everything but save for later and again then when I have five of those all save for later then I move into my living room which used to be my living room now it's my photo room and I'll go into my photo room and I will pull up my cell phone I'll go to my eBay app and when I click on sell there is my list of drafts. They're all there that I've saved for later. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. So, and then now each one, when I pull up the first draft, it's ready for photos. So I click on photo. I take my picture, click, 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 12 photos, enter, and they go live. Go to the next one, and I can list items really fast that using that procedure. So a few final words and helpful tips. The first one is to go shopping. <laughs> go do some shopping because this is the quickest way also to help you learn how to sell on eBay is to do some shopping and you can find everyday stuff on eBay everything that you need you can find on eBay I buy lip balm on eBay I buy lip balm for my kids on eBay $3.99 free shipping I send it to my kids this is the other fun thing about eBay you can have your address your kids address your aunt your uncle your grandparents whoever you can have a bunch of family and friends addresses in your eBay account and then when you go to ship all you do is switch who you're shipping to change the address you can buy toys for your pet I buy um, dog bones for my grand dogs and I have uh, grand cat I have no grandkids so I send dogs and cats toys <laughs> you can also get uh, lotion get yourself some sunscreen and coffee you can buy coffee mugs obviously but you can also buy coffee I buy I bought some really interesting Colombian types of coffee on eBay from um, and Dominican coffee I've bought on eBay as well there's your shipping scale do a search Sega SAGA postal scale there's one 66 LB that was selling the day that I took the screenshot at $16.99. So there's, he was having a markdown manager sale. Poly bags, I like to use poly bags for items under a pound. And I buy them all on eBay. All I do is a search for poly bags and I try to buy them in by the case. I'll put in case poly bags. So over 110 millions, 
items are available worldwide on eBay, over 90 million active users worldwide, approximately 7 million items are added every day, a pair of shoes sells every 8 seconds, a motor part or accessory sells every second, a cell phone every 6 seconds, and a car every 90 seconds. <laughs> it's crazy. And one thing they don't mention is a forklift sells every four hours. So this is where my motto comes in. There is plenty of eBay for us all to be blessed and prosper. And I created that motto when uh, the first year that eBay flew me into headquarters and I was able to take a tour. And when I actually saw the screens with all of the people joining eBay, all of the items being sold and all of the activity going on, I just stood there and thought, oh my gosh, I'm just a little grain of salt <laughs> in this eBay sea. And that's when it hit me that there's plenty of room for all of us on eBay. We can all make a living. I like to use my husband as an example. Those that of you that are here that have heard the stories, close your ears. But there's several that haven't. And, and that is my husband, he had um, a seal coating blacktop business. And the year that the economy went bad with no companies were getting their parking lots done anymore, then, of course, he had a very good eBay instructor. So I showed him how to look things up on eBay and research. And he would type with two fingers and he would look stuff up on eBay. Well, he um, hooked up with this local lady that does estate sales. So that's another thing. Do a search, a Google search for estate sales in your community. And then when you when they send you a notice on what they've got at the next estate sale, you can go to completed listings, advanced search, and type in a few words of the, the items that they're selling, and that'll help you decide whether it's worth going there or not. This particular lady sent him a link of camera equipment that she was selling, and he she took a silent auction. For. So he made her an offer of $2,500. Well, long story short, he lost the auction. A couple days go by. She calls him up and said the first guy was 4000 something and he had no money. The next guy was 3000 something and he had no money. So it's down to you. Do you have 2500 And he said, yes, I do. So he went over there, picked up the camera lens equipment, came home. The first lens he listed on eBay sold for $2,500. He did $17,000 in two months on camera equipment. Now, here's a guy that knew nothing about camera equipment, and he didn't know much about eBay, but he knew how to research products. And this is why I'm a firm believer that you can go any direction you want with eBay. People come to me and say, well, how much money can I make? It's up to you. It's up to you how much money you want to make. You you get out there and you get the stuff listed because of the research and the availability of your stuff. The sky's the limit. It's totally up to you. So watch your email inbox for a copy of this presentation. And I – it. Yeah, right on time. How about that? So I will be um, sending everybody a copy of the presentation, and I will go to questions in a moment. So if you have any questions, feel free to type them in the question box, and then I will answer them in a few minutes, and I'm going to stop the recording. So I am available for those that are watching this in the archives. Um, I do consulting. I can help you set up an eBay store work with the basics of selling, and I can help you with marketing and, of course, email consulting. So if you need to do some email marketing on eBay and off eBay, I'm also here for you. So thank you for tuning in. My name is Dana Crawford, and until next time, have a happy eBay selling day.